Hey everyone, in this tutorial we'll be showing you how to use the Looking Glass WebXR library. This is an open source tool available directly on our GitHub. It was originally developed by Kai Ninomiya, and we're really grateful for him putting the time and effort into developing this library and allowing us to maintain it. So WebXR is really, really neat because it allows you to essentially develop interactive real-time applications directly in your web browser and share them just with a link. And we're really, really excited to show you some of the possibilities that you can build with this tool. In this tutorial, we'll be going through how to set up a Seamless 3.js, React v Fiber, and then later on, we'll be going through Spline. So stay tuned for that video as well. So to start off with this video, we're going to be using Code Sandbox, an online tool that allows you to do all of your code directly in the browser. Super neat. And if you want to access this demo, you can click the link below in this tutorial or in the video description on YouTube. So let's take a look here. So this demo in particular is just done with normal 3.js, so nothing fancy going on here. Uh, this is all just normal JavaScript, which is super neat. So the first thing you'll need to do is add this import statement here. So we'll need to import the Looking Glass with XR polyfill and Looking Glass config. I'm actually just going to quickly change how this layout is done so that way it makes it a bit more clear as to what's happening here. So these are named exports, so you just need to make sure that the curly brackets here are present, so that way you can import them. And then you'll want to import it from at looking glass slash WebXR. So what did those two objects do, right? So the looking glass WebXR polyfill is what actually adds in the code that tells the browser what a looking glass is. And then the config allows you to set all of the options for your looking glass. So that means your view resolution, the number of views you want to render, the position or starting position rather of the camera, and then the field of view, among other things. If you're interested in all of the values that you can set here, I would definitely recommend checking out our documentation site that has all of this listed. So in order to add this to your existing 3.js scene, this is the only code you need, right? So we're setting up a config with some default values, and then we're adding a uh, the, the looking glass with XR polyfill, which will add in all of the code that's needed to render the scene. Now, if your scene's not already set up to use WebXR, there are a few more things we'll need to add. Namely, the little button down here that says enter VR, and also we'll need to set our render to be XR enabled. So if we look down here, uh, on line 31 of this example, after we've declared our render, which is how 3.js actually renders the scene, uh, we have a little line of code here that just says renderer.xr.enabled equals true, and that will tell the renderer, hey, we want to use WebXR with this. And then lower down, we also have this line here on line 42 that says document.body.append parentheses VR button dot create button renderer. So this actually tells, uh, this essentially creates the XR session that's needed for the scene to start. The VR button is imported directly from 3.js here. So the only thing we're adding with our library here is the code that tells the browser, hey, this is what a looking glass is. So without further ado, let's get started with this, right? So we've got our scene set up, we've got the VR button, we've got our XR scene ready, uh, you know, our render is all set up, and let's go ahead and hit enter VR here. Now, what you'll see if you have Looking Glass Bridge running is a little window will open up like this, and we'll need to move that to the Looking Glass. So to do that, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this window and drag it. So you can see I'm just dragging it from the main desktop here down to my Looking Glass. This will depend on where you have your screen arranged and everything. So if you have it to the right, then you want to move it there. Then once you have it on the Looking Glass itself, just simply double click the window and you'll have a full 3D scene, which you can see here, rotating it, and it's actually 3D, which is cool. So the other thing you can do with this is you can actually left click to rotate the scene, right click to pan and zoom in and out, provided that your mouse is in the looking glass itself, which is pretty neat. So this is just the start, right? So already we have an interactive demo running with 3JS. But what else can we do with it? And that's what we're going to get into next, right? There's all of the cool things we can do with 3JS. So in addition to 3JS, we can also use React 3 Fiber with our WebXR extension, which is super neat. So if you're unfamiliar, React 3 Fiber is a really cool ecosystem that allows you to use React, which is a JavaScript renderer, with 3JS. 
This means you can do things like components, interactive state, and things that would be a bit more challenging to do in normal vanilla JavaScript. They also have a really cool library called Dry that allows you to build a ton of really cool scenes as easy as possible. My favorite thing to go through are these examples here, which just have so many cool, neat integrations with things like environment maps and uh, physics and things like that. So if you're looking for inspiration on what you can build on the web, this is definitely a great spot. So let's look at how we implement the WebXR library here. So to add Looking Glass support to a React Free Fiber project, we need to do two things. So first, just like last time, we need to import the Looking Glass WebXR polyfill and Looking Glass config from our Looking Glass WebXR project. We also need to import the VR canvas from a library called at React3 slash XR. In this, in this version, we're using uh, version uh, 3.5.0 of the XR library. Then you'll see something very similar to what we did last time, which essentially we're setting up our config and then we're adding in our polyfill for to turn your React to Fiber scene into a XR supported scene. You just need to replace your canvas element with VR canvas. In the latest version of the XR library, this does change though, so you'll want to look at the docs for that. So now that we've got our looking glass config and our polyfill set up along with the VR canvas, we can hit enter VR and this will open up the new window just like we saw last time. And then same as before, we're gonna take the scene and just drag it down into the looking glass like so and double click. And you'll see we've got our watch there. We can zoom out, frame it a bit. And this one, I think in particular, looks really, really cool. I quite like, quite like this. And of course we can use WASMD on the keyboard to bring it forward. And I'm gonna scoot it like right about there. It looks pretty good. And this is really neat. So there's a lot of fun things and um, yeah, we can just like rotate it around. We can zoom in and out, pan, right click, all this fun stuff. So um, yeah, pretty neat. And the other neat thing you can do is you can actually keyframe the config options as well. I said keyframe animate. So the config is not static, right? So what you can do is actually change the config options with code. And we'll do a quick demo of that. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna set one of these config values with code here. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify the config.trackballx. Now it's important here to set the default, right? So we've got our default value, but what I wanna do is I actually wanna modify this later in the code. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this value here and we're gonna say we want to do something fun and let's do just like we're doing with the uh, values above we're gonna say math dot sign in the parentheses I'm gonna get rid of the um, thing here and we're gonna do time let's just do divided by four just like above and we'll put space there and divide that by eight so that should give us a fun number and what this will do is this will automatically update the trackball scene which is the rotation for the X coordinate. So let's see what this does. All right, so I'm gonna hit save and then switch over to our bus camera. Just need to position that properly. I'm gonna hit enter VR again. And now what we should see is that our rotation is changing. It's ever so subtle, but you can see it. So if we were to change this by say divide this by a smaller number like one then you can see it automatically updated here and what i'm going to do real quick just to show this off a bit better is i'm going to turn off all of these other rotations here so we can see what's happening with the camera right so now we're not moving the watch at all right so the watch object is not moving i'll just show the code there so we've commented out all of these refs here and all we have now is the config.trackballx being set with sign. And if we switch back over to the looking glass, you can see that this is actually updating just with the looking glass camera essentially being modified, which is super neat. And you can extend this with scroll controls and have a whole bunch of really, really neat interactive uh, demos essentially uh, by keyframing 
these values to go along with your experience. So there's a lot of really, really fun stuff you can do with this kind of functionality. So I'm excited to see what y'all make with it.